Welcome to the Pro Cheerleading Podcast, hosted by Makiba and Brittany, two former NFL cheerleaders discussing hot topics in the pro cheerleading industry and revealing the truth behind the palms. We are trying to see if we can play any sort of music without getting in trouble. I don't know if we can. If we are taken off the air, it's because we... Don't report us. <laughs> What's welcome. today's episode, Brittany? <gasps> Bish better have my money. Well, <laughs> act like you forgot. <laughs> I cannot sing, and I'm trying to spare you all from hearing me even attempt to try. But Rihanna's a badass, and we like her message. Yes. And that's been in the topics lately for cheerleaders, huh? Well, isn't it like the number one question we're always asked? It always is. Like, did they pay you girls? Like, did you ever make any money? Why'd you do it if it's for free? Always got that question. At promos, friends and family, they all wanted to know. Especially when the lawsuits started coming out, right? It's like, did you guys get paid? And the way they're treated is terrible. Um, I don't know if they asked that about NBA dancers and other cheerleaders, professional cheerleaders, but since everybody wants to talk about what NFL cheerleaders are paid. Let's talk about it. But first, some cheer chat, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So we launched last week. Makiba, high five. Yes, yes. We are officially on every single podcast site that I can think of. We are on... Stitcher. Stitcher. iTunes. Yes, Google Play, Google Podcasts. Which I didn't even know was a thing, Google Podcast, to be honest. So. I didn't either. And it's Google Play. Apparently, they're two separate things. If oh. you listen to music on Google, 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 Google Play, <laughs> <laughs> um, you'll find the podcast there. Um, we're on SoundCloud. We are literally... Anywhere you can imagine. Yeah. And our website. Yes, we do have our website. On Podient. Well. Yes. Pro Chilling Podcast. Dot Podient. Dot co. It's European because we're fancy. Yes. We bougie and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I hope we're saying the company name right. We keep going back and forth from podiant to podiant, but yeah, it's it's what we we say it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, boom. So thank you everybody who has listened to the podcast, downloaded our episodes, and gave us such good feedback. It had our launch date just super exciting. For the minute we woke up, we were pumped. And we appreciate you listening. Yeah, I had nervous diarrhea, but it was a good day. I lost some weight, and it was Halloween. I gained it back in the evening. So right. It was perfect. Oh, I've been on a sugar high all week long. So, um, so no, we're super ap- excited. This is our fifth episode. It is. Oh, is it? it is. Oh, my gosh. She's Got the Looks is actually coming out next, y'all. Yeah. So, we're a little ahead of the game. Mm-hmm. So, every Wednesday, we haven't figured out how to... Figure out the time, but it'll be out there we sometime Wednesday. Some, uh, we have to do some math to figure out what time it is in Europe when our episodes are <laughs> published. But pretty much when you wake up in the morning, it'll be there. How about that? Yeah. Morning commute. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about for Cheer Chat, you guys, because my birthday is coming up on the 5th of November. That's why the 5 is my favorite number. And Brittany, gosh, this is like the best present ever. My gums are showing. <laughs> <laughs> but Brittany brought in, in celebration of our launch, I'm holding it up like you can see it. I know you can't. But it's a, and I'm wearing it, and I'm hot and sweaty. <laughs> but it's a hooded sweatshirt with our logo on the back. And when we were joking about starting this podcast in the beginning, Brittany would always kid around and say that she's pinky and I'm the brain. Pinky and the brain. It's true. It, it is, is true. not. But on the front, it says the brain with 05, my favorite number, in the same font as our logo and it's the logo on the back and i'm telling you it's the cutest present ever i'm so i'm just i freaking love it thank you so much of course yeah thank you again but i probably stink (laughs) so (laughs) i'm super excited this is just happy early birthday thank you so much um i'm gonna wear that with a onesie for my birthday yeah (laughs) do it i love it um but yeah hey we might end up with some merchandise and we were the first to don the actual exactly if you're interested, girl. let us know down below. I'll make you one. <laughs> you have to have a cute nickname. It could be your cheer nickname or something. Yeah. That's going to be the only rule when, we, when people place orders, right? True. Like, you got to give yourself a jersey number with your nickname on it. There you go. 
I love it. Thank you so much. Of course. Happy birthday, co-host. <laughs> co-host. All, All right. right. Back to our money situation. Yeah. yeah. Do we have any right now doing this podcast? Uh, no. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Don't they have that uh, thing where you can beg for money from your listeners that you've always oh, mentioned? Oh, yeah. What is that called? We need to figure it out. Um, I forget. What it's is like, it called? I, I told you all about you, it. I know. You were the big advocate for it. Well, that is the main problem with cheerleaders. We can't ask for money, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Clearly. Um, well, anyway, yeah. we'll, be, we'll report back on that point. But in all seriousness, but fun seriousness, we're going to get into this topic of giving my money. Yeah. You know, what are we paid? How should we be paid? But let's just start with the job itself, right? If you're going to justify and ask for some money. What kind of time commitment? Yes. And what's truthful? You know, wh- how much time are we really spending a week? Yes. Being a cheerleader. And so we're about to break it down. All right. So, so the basics, right? Yes. Is practice starts right after auditions. Yes. And we're practicing, uh, let's see. Well, let's just go through the auditions process in terms of how much work you got to put into it okay. just to make the dang on team. And knowing that these spots are highly coveted, you're talking about anywhere from like 25 to 40 girls on each team like 500 or less or more come show up our auditions but just to prepare for auditions you're having to spend a little money come out of pocket to pay for your hair your makeup your look you don't have those sponsorships yet no so you gotta figure it out you gotta have the right attire to help you stand out i mean do you need to go broke doing it probably not but But i have but (laughs) i auditioned many times we're actually making it oh my gosh and then realize you could just use the same top or just be plain jane like you don't need a sparkle sparkle but they you know but then you feel a little naked right and butt hurt when you show up at auditions and everybody else is blinged out out. yeah yeah yeah, for sure but you're paying you know maybe 100 150 bucks for a little outfit right Mm -hmm. you know custom made custom made i mean who knows what you're spending on that and then you know we have audition prep courses yeah. Just so you can get a feel for the you know choreography and ask questions. They charge for that. They do. It doesn't matter if you're a veteran, new person, just taking it for fun. 25 bucks up to 50 bucks. If you do an intensive workshop, you're talking about uh, 75 to $100, $150 for those intensive where you have one-on-one time with the directors where they give you feedback and teach you routines and it's more one-on-one time. And then, you know, there's a You're basically fee. paying to be judged, right? Yes. Let's be real. <laughs> really. <for laughs> judging sure. before yeah. judging time. Yeah. So that's your application fee. Yeah. So, you know, just to get going, let's say if you put at least like $200 towards your look, you know, $100 towards prep, whether that's classes, dance classes somewhere else. I mean. Don't some teams charge, like you have to pay them to audition? Yeah, the application fees. Okay, okay, or, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, that's what oh, you're yeah. saying. But no, it's so that adds up to a it good does. amount of like, mm-hmm. let's just say three hundred bucks just to audition. Okay, you're on the team. You got picked. You you feel so lucky, and um, you you better have a job, right? But you know, yeah, you have. Most teams require that you have a job or be a full time student. So if you're a full time student, you're broke. Yeah, unless exactly. you have mommy and daddy. I didn't. I didn't have that either. <laughs> I didn't have that. But. Um, you know, either that or you're working a full-time job. You're either, or you're putting together a couple part-time jobs, right? Yeah. Just to like me over here. piecemeal it together so you mm-hmm. can make ends meet. If you do have a full-time job, I hope you have paid time off vacation where you can, because you're going to miss a lot of work. How about, you know, let's, it's that's true. just the reality yep, of it. Yeah, that's the reality of it. So what's practice like, Brittany, the time commitment after work? Well, first of all, you have to go through orientation, which ours was business attire. You had to look very nice and... Mm-hmm. I spent a lot on clothes, actually, that didn't oh, pertain true. to actually dancing. Yeah, because, because you actually... Yeah, when would I have a pants. pencil skirt? I mean, when I made it, I was 21. Obviously, I had part-time jobs. And, and you have to look cute at every little function that you cute. have. Like, I mean, I did cute. buy outfits for our little squad get-togethers because we're just... Over the top. We're, you gotta it's extra. Up. You got to yeah. keep up. You can't go in sweatpants unless it's a... That's why I liked our crew a lot, because yes, we could show up in right. sweatpants and yeah, just yeah, yeah. chill with each other and not be about like getting all glammed all the time. But Our yes. crew, like the pedestrians? Yes. Okay. The, that crew. Yeah. Yes. Um, shout out to the pedestrians. Heck yeah. We will explain the... We do need to explain this title, because not should. people don't always understand where we're coming from. Go so for, for the team. record, off topic, but not really. Um, during the Seahawks, you know, a couple years that we were on the team... 
when we were counted out for the Super Bowl the year that we won, I believe it was, um, or it started around that time, but some newscaster referred to our wide receivers as pedestrian. Like they're just basic. Basic. We don't even know who they are. Talking about Doug Baldwin, talking about, you know, the rest of our receivers. And so they kind of wore it as a chip on their shoulder and they're just kind of referred to themselves as pedestrians. And I thought it was like, you know, kind of described our crew because we, you know, we're kind of like the unsung heroes and we just kind of have our own little thing. And it's not like a click, but we just kind of jokingly refer to ourselves as that. And that's That's it. it. We were just kind of low maintenance and chill down. Yeah, we're just more chill. Yeah. But we, we held it down. Yeah. Yeah. So we would you can get underestimate together, us like, if you want to, but we, yeah, yeah, you know, we're bringing the heat. Yeah, yeah. whatever. Okay. 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 What the heck were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Just basically, you always had to have an outfit, a hot That's new right. outfit. For sure. We'll get you into it. You had to have the look because honestly, plenty of events. when you're a professional cheerleader, you have this glamorous look while you're out there at events doing, you know, doing your thing as a cheerleader. And you kind of felt the pressure to keep that look going, even if you were not outside Out, of it you know mm-hmm. even if you weren't working um i mean i love my neighborhood grocery store because i was like i can't keep this crap up okay like i have to be able to look normal which is not makeup wearing sweats whatever and comfortable without mm-hmm. it being like shock to the system like you know right bright pink lipstick in your face right all the time yeah. so um but you did feel like you had to maintain the look and just mm-hmm. that in and of itself right with attire mm-hmm. adds up so like you said orientation business meetings classes that we had to take we also were dressed up for so to the extent you were a low casual low-key casual gal gal no longer step it up Mm -hmm. so now you're practicing and how much time do we spend in rehearsals that really just depended on how quick we got it yeah don't you think because you're learning dances you're having to practice other you know dances you've learned last week yep just builds on each other. Business meetings, basically, after to talk about squad squad business, filling promos, appearances, etc. But, you know, that's four hours about for each rehearsal. Twice and a week. Twice a week. Mm-hmm. And because this is the first, you know, the one time that you're gathering, like, 30-plus women together to go over formations and setting things, like, you, that wasn't a time to practice. You had to come to rehearsals prepared know your stuff because True. we don't have time for you to use this to practice the dance even though we all practice while we were waiting for practice to start yeah, in our cars or across yes. the mcdonald's dun, dun, dun. another side trouble. story we got in trouble for dancing um, at mcdonald's just trying to like making sure that you didn't forget anything like it's just kind of well because our squad had two ups right we forgot to explain that. But basically, before practice officially started, mm-hmm. we would warm up, do our sit-ups, some lunges, stretch, get ready. And then the director would turn to someone and say, Makiba, pick two numbers. And I would say three and five. And she would go, three plus five is eight. Divided Minus by two <laughs> is six. Triple that. Number three from squad three. <laughs> and number two from squad five. We don't even have squad five. <laughs> But you get the gist, and you'd yeah. be called up there, Those and you'd have to do the routine that she requested. And I mean, it kept you on your toes. The expectation was that you always know your stuff, so you're actually having to put in time outside of the dress rehearsal time to be ready for practice. And we would get together outside of practice at least for a couple hours, at Once least a, a couple week. times a week. Yeah, yeah one to Depending two times a week. And week ahead. you wanted to know, be ready for games. So, um, so that's a lot of time that. You, you're paid for the rehearsals, but you're not paid for the hours that you put in to prepare. That also includes time at the gym, where you have to keep your butt in shape so you aren't getting in trouble On for fat weight. camp. No, Brittany calls it fat camp, but it's not <laughs> Which pleasant. I was sent. <laughs> Which now I'd be on Fat Camp Island. Shit, I'm getting like 35, girl. Okay, keep it moving. Yes, yeah, but you have to maintain the look again, and fitness is part of it as well, so you're exercising you're practicing the dances and that is generally speaking not paid yep and then you know as what part time of the job, does practice happen it's usually after work after work hours. so everybody's coming from their nine to five or whatever they got going on to practice so right. we'd have like 12 plus hour days oh yeah practice nights were Minimum. were pretty rough you're not really eating dinner because you nope. probably need to stay skinny yep. <laughs> for, <laughs> for practice that's probably why I, I was skinny then it's like you never ate. You You're really dancing didn't. For I mean, four unless hours. you were eating after practice, and oh, you know. I did McDonald's sometimes. Yeah, you had to. Just, you, yeah, either that or I. I old fashioned. I think sometimes if you eat too late, you'll have nightmares. So oh, 
I tried I not to eat. I thought it was spicy food. Oh, well, I'm going to have to ask my mom about that. But yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> really eat after practice. But so, yeah, so that's the, the commitment, at least for practices. You guys, this is going to be a long episode because yeah, we got it, it broken down to the compound and we're just trying to shape up for you like what the actual job entails so that when we get to talking about that money, you can understand why it's not enough. Yeah. So then you have your promo appearances, right? Mm-hmm. These are, um, sometimes there are a few that are mandatory, but for the most part, um, they're optional based upon your schedule. Um, but you would normally be paid either hourly or a set amount for those promo appearances. So that's good. Yeah. And if you, let's say the promo was like a 15 minute meet and greet, Mm -hmm. our team did it where you got paid at least four hours of work, right? Of work. So even if it was 15 minutes, you Mm -hmm. got four hours. So that was kind of nice. Yeah. Because for me, you know, leaving my full-time job where I'm using up my PTO hours for an hour long appearance. I mean, I never really tried to do the math for it to work out because this was gas money to me. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day. Um, but it was nice that at least we can count on a chunk of um, a four hours pay, even if it ended up being a pretty short appearance. So that's that's a positive. It is. But I remember taking time off and I didn't necessarily have paid time off. So I was just, hey boss, can I have this random Wednesday off to get there in time and mm-hmm. get ready. I mean, you're not just showing up like, oh, I woke exactly. up like this. Oh, you need at no. least an hour, maybe two, to, to get, get your ready life together. and get there. Oh, talk about just going from like Wonder Woman or something. Yeah. Uh, what's this superhero that would change in a, oh, maybe that's Superman. But the point is, <laughs> <laughs> imagine being at a nine to five job in regular clothes. And I've done that plenty of times at my different jobs. I love everybody that just put up with it. But I go from looking like, basic to coming out of a bathroom and like, like ah. yeah uh just crazy um but yes that time to prep for promo mm-hmm. appearances is definitely not compensated for but time you have to spend either that or you're doing your makeup in your car yep i've done that plenty of I've times i'm an expert at that or you curl your hair and then kind of like pin it up and then people are like what are you doing at work and you're like just leave me alone i'm leaving <laughs> early bye <laughs> but yeah that's time out of the office where you might be getting a more a decent salary and you're having to sacrifice that so you can do some of the appearances which you know there are appearances in the community and it may seem like um it is community service oriented but there are they are compensated appearances Mm -hmm. so that's it's not like we're volunteering for free when we do these charity appearances just to keep it real i mean it's not like we're making a hundred you know a million bucks but we are compensated for that time um but like i said you know you're doing this and you're balancing either you're being a full-time student you know, having a job or multiple jobs. So you're really just having to balance all of this and hope at the end of the day, you have enough money to pay your yeah. <laughs> to pay your bills. Well, I uh, remember that like my paychecks, I had a paycheck every weekend because it was alternating oh, from cheerleading. That did help. So it was kind of cool. Like, woo, I'm getting paid. I'm getting every paid. Every week, every week, paid. every week. One's less than the other, but yeah. yes, mm-hmm. it helps to get paid whenever you, that, I do miss that. Yeah, of. that was kind of nice. That was the, that was the perk from it. Um, but what you're having to invest back into the, Maintaining that job, mm-hmm. it probably amounts to not much. But you're, you know, on average spending about 30 to 40 hours a week. Like if you think of two rehearsals, practice outside of that to be ready, um, and then a game, which is an eight-hour day, guys, because we get there at 9 a.m. for a 1 o'clock game. Yep, four hours before four kickoff. Four hours before kickoff. So we're practicing on the field. We're selling calendars. We are getting ourselves ready. We're performing throughout the stadium. Mm-hmm. There's a four-hour game, so it's really a long day. But you are paid from the time that you get there. Yeah, you clock in. You yeah. clock in, you clock out. Mm-hmm. And then in the off-season, you might still be doing some of this. It's not games, mm-hmm. but you still might be doing appearances. You might be traveling. And how does travel work, Brittany? Well, yeah, I was on show group. And so usually in the off-season around February, March, um, we would do a tour for the military. Mm-hmm. And um, you weren't paid to sit on that plane for 12 hours you were paid for your performance, which was 90 minutes, and any other special appearances you made, mm. like having lunch with the troops and stuff, you were paid for that. But um, again, time off from work. And I mean, I love traveling, so oh, I would nice. honestly do it for nothing. Right. Um, we got per diem from the company that brought us out, mm-hmm. out to Europe. Um, and, you know, you have to replace everything if you get robbed. Um, a side story. <laughs> I was in that group that uh, got robbed in Italy. Ooh. But, yeah, we'll have to tell that story another time. But, yeah. Or even if you're just driving to Wenatchee for the Special Olympics, 
I don't think you're necessarily paid for your time in the van, you know. No. But you have to be glammed up and look the part. Like, there's no off time when you're on. Exactly. If that makes sense. That like, makes total sense. For girls that, are, that know this life, um, you can it's, never it's be true. doing your lipstick or eyeliner in the car. Like, when someone sees you and you are in the promo outfit, which is provided, mm-hmm. you better look head to toe the part. Look ready. Yeah, be look ready. ready. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, you can be leaving at 5 in the morning. Guess what? Look glamorous and beautiful. Yeah, wake and up floss. at three and get ready and go. There have been plenty of times where Me you too. have, oh my gosh, the news appearances in the mornings. Oh, those are the where you're doing worse. like, oh my gosh, you're showing up at the um, news outlets at five a.m. and that means getting up at three thirty and getting full glam. Mm-hmm. Like in, it's, uh, you know, not all of it was glamorous, but it. I wish it counted the get ready time. You, you'd be hey. comped for an, at least an hour of, well, just an hour because some people take fifty million years to get ready. Yeah, that's a great point because, you know, maybe it's not like anybody looked bad, but you would probably be like, I'm being paid for this hour of mm-hmm. prep. So I you feel would, good about... Yeah, I feel yeah. good about the time that mm-hmm. I got up early and for. And travel time. Honestly, yeah. like, so some of the promo- promotional appearances were not necessarily, you know, it's up to you to sign up for them. Like mm-hmm. we said in another episode, we like doing road trips together. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, you're, you're actually having to travel sometimes you know, kind of far away in traffic, et cetera. And so it'd be nice if there was a way to account for at least the longer trips where you can, I think it was always the offer to pay for mileage, but I've never. Nobody really... ever followed through with it. It's yeah. Like on to the next promo, games coming up, like other things took yeah. up your, your time and your mind. And you know what I found super interesting is just in terms of like how we clock all these hours, right? It was never, um, we don't fill out timesheets. I'm sure every team might be different, and it may be different even now with the Seahawks cheerleaders, but we didn't fill out our own timesheets. They were filled out for us. And so, again, I never really counted on every little dime from this because that's I just kind of wrote it off, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, what if what if there were mistakes made mm, in I your timesheet? I did time notice sh- some, like, oh, that wasn't well, as much as I thought. And I did two promos this week. I right. had three practices because of show group or something. I can, but I would just, you know. Well, I just found it interesting that they didn't let us log our own time and then have the director or someone review it oh, as opposed approved. to, like, hmm. entering everything in. I'm sure she had a system. But um, but that it's just a true, it's just a, you know, maybe other teams have their own rules around that. But you kind of would have to log your own hours. Mm-hmm. And if you really were counting on that check to be a certain amount and want to make sure that there's some accountability there, you'd have to do that on your own because you don't enter the time in right. yourselves and that's what uh, we forgot to talk about this but um mm. uh calendar sales we got commission on that too oh, yeah and so let's say you sold 20 calendars get five dollar commission is that bonus on each one do you right. get a bonus on that is that on your check or not right like you just kind of don't pay a check pay, pay, pay attention for it's sure. like direct deposit forget about it right especially when you're not when you know it's really not going to be that much at the end yeah. of the day i mean it's fun money yeah but so that covers the job. Right, right. Okay. That covers the job. It it's does. a lot of work. It's a lot of hours. And some of the time is compensated for, some of it's not. But outside of that, you're actually kind of coming out of pocket throughout the season. We've mentioned some of these expenses, but. Um, go for it. List them off. Here we go. Cha ching. I wish we had a like calculator. <laughs> ding, ding. Uh, <laughs> so we already covered money spent for auditions, right? Yep. Um, and the time that you spend outside of work, so you're missing out on that money, okay. right? So that might potentially be a dock and pay. I know my last season, because I wanted to do every appearance possible, I ran out of PTO. So every time that I took out wow. of the office was unpaid time. Yeah. Well, Which, our team didn't require you to have like something else. You could just do this full time and pick true. every promo you wanted. True. You know. Whatever just, worked for yeah, you. Yeah, whatever worked for you. So that's kind of cool, but it really was. You could make it a 40-hour a week job right for sure you could and honestly nobody has I mean a bullet to your head and I've seen these arguments in some of these articles about well nobody's forcing these cheerleaders to do it and why would they do it and we'll get to that later why we do it um but you really you made the experience I think what you wanted it to be in terms of how much you put in Mm -hmm. so some of these things that we're going to talk about you may have had a choice in whether you're going to make this investment or not or not so let's get into it Talking about uniform maintenance, like, yeah, I had to buy like baby shampoo because we maintained and cleaned our own uniforms. It's not like 
or one of the players where after every game they're handed a brand new, you know. Yeah. Or they uniform. leave it there for it to be dry clean. Right. No, oh, no, no, wouldn't no. that be fabulous? I was hanging my stuff out of the sink and washing it with baby shampoo. Oh, special care instructions. Yeah, okay. it's special not like can... products to use. So I had to go buy those things. Not not much. You but know, it's... baby shampoo's not expensive, but it's just kind of like, what? The maintenance. I still have it. Or, you know, like, uh, do you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wash my uniform that much, obviously. <laughs> but you are having to also pay for, like, lost uniform Ooh. items, right? So, Or if you stain something or damage something, you're actually having to yeah, we pay for it out of pocket. Yeah, we that they checked off at the end of the year because you had to turn in everything because it wasn't guaranteed your spot. Right. Um, if you were re auditioning. And they each one had a price. And I remember one of the items, our fancy blinged out collar, yes. was like $350. Oh, yeah. So if you I... just like, oops, it fell out of your trunk of your car or something, you're paying to replace that. $350. Right. So and another crying in the hallway because your rent money's gone because <laughs> you forgot well, your tie. We had some girls on the team. I mean, myself included. I mean, my car window got busted out yeah. one practice. I think somebody else's car was broken into. Um, all there, there have been some. Yeah, were taken all it was after a game. Yeah, so I mean, crap happens, and mm-hmm. you're having to kind of. I mean, I think our director worked with us in terms of trying to take into account that really we couldn't. Help. That wasn't your fault. Yeah, exactly, yeah. but. But you're on the hook for it. I mean, and uh, you don't get to keep it. And if you try to sneak it on the side and keep it, then you're paying for it. Um, so we talked about also like attire for special squad events, not looking busted. So you have to step your game up and pay for clothing. And then, you know, we love the networking and the bonding and just amongst the girls. Um, but we jokingly <laughs> called it like what was it a called? seagull tax. But yeah. <laughs> You know, you would think of 30 to 40 women who have birthdays throughout the year, the season, and it's a very thoughtful gesture to, you know, to bring flowers to practice (laughs) or, you know, something to celebrate um, that young lady. But Mm -hmm. um, 30 of us. And they'd be like, hey, everybody bring $10 and I'll like get him a little something. (laughs) And it would be like a dollar candy bar and like some gorgeous flowers. And you're like doing the math. You're like, hmm. $300, $300, huh? And wow. And my processing and handling fee is. Yes. But, but, you know, when you if you think about the frequency of it, like we bring gifts to the locker room on game squad. day for your squad. Mm-hmm. You know, there's birthdays, there's Christmas, and there's gifts for your Pro Bowl cheerleader. There's gifts for... There's your director, just, yeah, the choreographer. There's always some gift giving going on. And right. so everybody's pooling money to kind of put that together. But if you think about it, especially for people who have, you know, less means throughout the season to kind of constantly have to fork it up some Yeah, money. you might as well just have some dollar bills in your purse every practice because someone's asking you for three bucks, five bucks, ten bucks. You're like, oh my gosh. We just, have to, we just have to laugh at it because it was just like, oh my gosh, you know. Yeah. Well, Again. special events. One that got kind of out of hand, if you ask me, was the Christmas party. Okay, I had oh. never been to, like, a company Christmas party before. So my rookie year, I showed up in, like, black jeans, a sparkle tank. She and like something that sparkle. Yes, that's all. that was the theme of our outfit. But everybody was, like, dressed to the nines. Like, red bottoms, short little dresses, <laughs> like, oh, glamour makeup, red yeah. lips. And I was like, oh, my God. I felt... One girl, I love her so much, but you know who I'm yeah. talking to. She wore... Ugg boots, ripped mm-hmm. jeans, and a sweater. Like, she looked adorable. But yeah. we did not know it was on this kind of level of, like, step it up. Yeah. So and the next year, yes, I had my little dress and my, yes. you know, fancy shoes. Yeah. And that didn't, that wasn't free. No. Like, I paid for that, you know. And I, I love dressing nice. up. So it was for me, fun. it was just like, you know. But I just, it was a main point that if it was anything related to getting together with the squad, you got to look. There's pictures. Mm-hmm. Everybody's picking pictures and posting them. You just can't, you know, just step we'll it up it. and, yeah, look glam and call it good. But, yes, you are putting up money for that. Um, what else? Calendar well, sales, huh? Yes, the crying <laughs> in the hallway. So if you didn't make your sales quota for calendars, you're coming out of pocket for mm-hmm. it. I've done it. I give them away to family members, but did it feel good to drop 20 bucks a calendar when I have a box that I didn't sell? In the back of your car, rolling yes. around. <laughs> and you're like, take them, take them, just giving them away. It so bad. That's a huge chunk it of is. money. And yeah. some people had to had to bite it because they didn't sell the appropriate number. But, you know, the other counter side to that is that, you know, that money goes into the program and it helps to you know, get uniforms and whatever else goes to the budget. For those selling gigs, 
Like when we got robbed by Mary Tyler Moore, mm-hmm. that was on our own time because we were trying to make calendar sales. You get yeah. commissions, so I guess, yeah. you know, five bucks an hour if you sell one <laughs> one an hour and you sit there for five hours. <laughs> they weren't always easy to sell. No. Some so, places they oh would go gosh. like hotcakes. They were Some not. places you, nobody even looked at you. Exactly. You know? So it was a hit and miss. But you had to actively try to set up calendar sales at like your local... You know, sports bar, Mm -hmm. bring them to family events, which was super awkward. Um, But, you know, sell yourself half naked on a calendar. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. And then, you know, we get some discounts and, like, sponsorships, right? But we – this is a part that's not clear to me. Um, We know how our team worked, and it may – things may have changed since we're not on the team. But, you know, you have, like, your tanning sponsor, your gym sponsorship, your makeup sponsor, your – Hair, hair you know, salon, spa services. Right. And so their names are plastered all over the sites. I've looked mm-hmm. at all of our teams, pro cheerleading teams in the NFL at least, and they have sponsorships. And I don't know if they just only sponsor their calendar and then everything else is just, you don't get crap. But yeah. we at least got a certain number of services at some of these spo- sponsors, like a, hair appointments, a certain number of them. I got my hair done by my favorite woman, Dewana, shout out to Dewana, who was my everything with my hair. I didn't, and I paid a lot of money over the course of my time as a pro cheerleader to maintain my hair, but. See, um, I didn't. I get my hair cut probably like once every three years, so. Really? I mean, oh, yeah. that's a lie, but it is but it's, like crazy you don't, wild. You don't have to do crazy maintenance, but if you think about the girls that, um, that dye their hair, mm-hmm. and if, you know, they have to maintain it, and instead of having some crazy root action going on. Like yeah. they're having, if it was, if you needed to see this, um, a stylist more frequently than the sponsorship allowed, then you probably had That's to pay true. for out of pocket or tip in a way where you're actually tipping for the full amount of the service as opposed to the discounted Okay, but amount. devil's advocate. We have like Jean Juarez up here, right? And they have like a finishing school. There's plenty of really good beauty schools. You could go and get that for a discount. I mean, it's risky. Yeah. It, <laughs> I don't know. I mean. I cried my car like. Cut an inch, and then they cut like an inch and a half, I and I'm bawling. Very, so very, I would be very, very nervous. I don't know. Maybe it's risky, but I just feel like there's ways to budget, and like you don't need to be going to the top stylists in your city to be getting your hair done. That's true. I know you need to stand out, but you already made the team. Like you're beautiful, you're in shape. It depends you know, on how much my, that transformation and the you know maybe the rookie right. transformation was. I'm gonna take you from, you know, brunette to some. Blonde. I don't know if they really go that drastic, right? Or maybe or purple or blonde. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know, maybe the maintaining the look that they expect of you, it might have been on your dime. When we look at articles for about girls from other teams, it definitely looks like there were some different expectations, uh, or not even expectations, different benefits allowed through their sponsorships. Because mm-hmm. I'm thinking, why were these girls paying for hair? Right. When they have a a salon sponsorship, maybe it's just for the show. You know, the horse and pony show for. Um, their calendar or photo shoots, but nothing beyond that. And that's, that's really that unfortunate. Adds that's kind of hard. Up. That I adds mean, up. I loved our sponsors. Gene Juarez, I was getting facials and floating in those tanks. And yeah. That wasn't at Gene Juarez, but what is it called? <laughs> Urban Flow? Urban Flow. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think this is on the directors to really negotiate a good sports sponsorship deal. Um, and if you think about from their perspective, you know, am I going to allow my salon to be flooded with 30 women or, you know, maybe they have multiple locations, but there's probably some trade-offs there. But mm-hmm. if they don't, you know, negotiate something where there's regular services and that the girls don't abuse it, can you imagine? Oh, I've had somebody, I've been asked before, like, did you go get your hair cut at blank, blank, blank? And I'd be like, no, I haven't. Somebody went in there and said that they were Seagal Brittany and got their hair cut and styled for free. Oh, really now? Yeah. I think I know who it was because all Britneys are crazy. But for reals, though, I was like... That's crazy. That's pretty bold. Because they, I mean, you know, well, that's their fault that they don't pull up the... They should know what are... Well, that's a lot of maintenance at the front desk to be like... Hold, please. Let me look up the roster and check to see who you are. But it should be a list. Like, let me check your ID real quick. Exactly. I'm getting my hair cut for free, so what... Your name is a little common, I'll hand over my ID. Yeah. There might be a redhead of Brittany Mm -hmm. out there. Right, maybe. Let's find that liar imposter. No. Yeah, I I almost got in trouble. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the makeup for these teams that they... Where they expect the cheerleaders to actually put up the money themselves to maintain the look. Let's just say that that 
adds up. Okay, well, what about, couldn't you, like, on our team, we had quite a few girls in the beauty industry. Mm -hmm. Like, couldn't you work out a trade? Be like, hey, girl, like, you do my hair for, like, a discount, or what do you think? Maybe. Just get creative. That's what I think. I think these girls are... I mean, if we band together and say, like, hey... We're all broke here. We're not getting enough yeah. money. <laughs> Does Brush anybody... my hair, <laughs> Makita. <about that. laughs> Please. But what if there was some kind of like, you know, hey, I have an extra. Like, think about all the silly text threads that we're ever a part mm-hmm. of. But like, it should be a community where it's like, yo, I'm out of tights. Does anybody have an say, extra pair of tights? Or, you know, I'm out of lashes. I mean, they're just, these things add up. And I think it all happens oh, maybe in the locker room. lashes. Yeah, I've spent. We didn't get no sponsor. I mean, we got a nice sponsorship discount through Mac Cosmetics, but Mm -hmm. like you could buy their lashes. Theirs were kind of expensive. Right, right, right. Well, you can always go the little cheap route. I mean, drugstore, (laughs) drugstore cosmetics and stick on nails. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, you do what you gotta do. My manicures are done by my mouth. I'm just kidding. (laughs) Oh my gosh. People okay. are probably like, I need to see her profile picture. This girl doesn't brush her hair. She doesn't get manicures. Well, it adds shower up. shower once a week. Come uh, on. You know, whatever, just so you don't stink. Anyway, sorry. But let's, so we, we've covered the job. If you didn't know how much goes into it, now you know. Uh, we talked about what you actually have to invest of your own mm-hmm. money at times to maintain the job. And then... Now we're going to just talk about how much do we make. And okay, let's go about it. Okay. Let's go about it. <laughs> let's go about it. Let's get, let's get into it. Um, but let's, hey, let's just back up. Okay. For everybody listening, how appropriate is it for people to ask you how much do you make? Like, I've always thought that was really rude. It's and I always just rude. responded, oh, we're really well taken care of here at the Seahawks. Because that yeah. was the truth. Right. I, I mean, just, some of the stuff you're about to read, it's like absurd that is. anybody would think that's okay. And I, but, think, I think the data out there where we were even doing research is, is, you know, not every person is going to feel comfortable throwing it out there. But, mm-hmm. I, you know, this is a good topic because we are underpaid. But, you know, just for some perspective... If people are asking you how much do you make, how much do you make all the time, it's it's freaking rude. I saw an Eagle cheerleader in an interview. She kind of gave it back to the to the interviewer and was just like, "How much, how do, much you do you make? Like who who does that?" She was really. I love it. I was kind of like, "Okay, girl, <laughs> that's silly for you," but no, she just she held her own about it, and it's. I Good think that's her. a very valid point. Like, is she don't... still on the team? <laughs> <laughs> Get the axe. Watch. <laughs> well, didn't you feel like? I mean, I know that when this became a hot topic. Um, and more people started to ask it, you feel like if you did tell the truth or speak on it that you probably would get a phone call like, <laughs> um, we don't disclose that. And mm-hmm. you know, in a lot of teams that um, were asked by news outlets of what do you pay your girls, they all have this canned answer of like, mm-hmm. we pay everyone for their for every appearance and hour spent on the team. It's very generic, it's not a dollar amount. And you know, depending on how many years you've been with the team, you might actually be getting a little bit more. But it's an hourly wage, you're considered part-time, you're considered seasonal, and it's either hourly or some flat rate based on, you know, maybe it's like 75 to $150 a game or a set amount over the course of the season. I think most teams are moving towards an hourly rate that at least meets minimum wage, thanks to a bunch of lawsuits that we'll cover later. But generally speaking, without saying, I made $10 and I know, what are you supposed to say? How are you supposed to answer that? I think that's so rude. And I feel like, especially when these lawsuits started happening, almost every promo I went to, there was somebody up in my face asking me that kind of yeah. stuff. It just drove me nuts a little bit. It's it's intrusive. I kind of shut it down and like moved it along. Yeah, and then it, they, there's a judgment placed on, you know, the fact that you would spend right. your time doing, doing something like this and it's just they don't understand why we do it right if we're paid so low but we'll, we'll yeah another thing we always said is like how can you dance out there like half naked yeah it's like we don't actually like, we have rain jackets <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> but Soccer moms. oh my gosh but no, yeah but there's we do we have appropriate attire like there are times where we're freezing our butts mm, off yeah, let's be no. real but um or the time we were locked outside yeah. in the snow <laughs> Testing out the temperature. <laughs> Is it really cold enough to die? Um, <laughs> stay out here a little longer until we 
Should we tell that story? <laughs> yes, go ahead. Well, I just think it's funny because I, was, I had a very strong feeling about it, and I was willing to sacrifice my life. Um, so we have these action green uniforms. It was you. No, it was not oh, me. Oh, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> but we had these action green uniforms, and uh, there, were, there were these lime green, loud. Biker short wearing. Unibike. Ugh. Unitard. Bike tard. They were disgusting. Yeah, I, was, I wasn't a fan. But they were long sleeved, and they had a navy blue crop top, literally like a bra top that fit underneath it. And the issue was whether. Because when did they come out? Like November? Yes. And here in Seattle in November, it's pretty chilly. I mean, yeah, we're talking about some in a night game. Rain. It was Thursday night football, so it was going to be pretty chilly. And um, oh, that's right. Nighttime thankfully, too. no rain, but it was nighttime and not snow, but definitely some cold behind weather was on the front. So we were trying to debate really quickly how to make these, how to make these warm enough to basically show, not cover them up. And the debate was whether we should buy some sort of... Librarian turtlenecks. <laughs> <laughs> that were nude colored, which is not oh, nude, which was not nude this. on everyone. So for the darker <laughs> complected women on the team, including myself, I personally would have preferred to freeze my behind off than put on some nude face... White girl nude. White girl nude <laughs> turtleneck to wear underneath that thing. I refuse to look like a fool on national TV. It was just not going down, and I was willing to freeze my behind off over it. That's just my position. I stuck to it. I was down, because there was no way I was putting that thing on. It was just looked absolutely I ridiculous. Don't I, th- I don't remember that. I thought it was always the Navy. So we settled so we ended on, on the Navy, Navy turtleneck. That literally worked. looked like librarians. It was a little I thought. odd. It was a little odd, but we, at least it wasn't nude. It That's was just true. the wrong color. Nude was not the way to go. How did we end up on that? The point is... But the point is, we were trying them on at practice to get the sizing. I think all of us had one at this point. Yeah. We were doing some photos and promos and all that stuff. And it was snowing outside, <laughs> and we were debating about this. And so our director was like, "Go see how cold it is outside." Yeah. And VMAC locks like the front door locks behind itself, so you have to have somebody inside let you back in. Whatever. How dumb were we that all of us <laughs> walked outside and she closed the door behind us and was looking at us like, "How's it going out there?" Yeah. No. Just to test it out, I guess. <laughs> Well, well, we lost one finger. <laughs> hey, I mean, we looked better in the blue than we would have been Frostbite. in the Frostbite. That was a cold game. It was cold. I hated it. But that's it. why you dance a lot. You know what I mean? You pray for the DJ to play. Lots and lots and lots and lots yeah. of music. But sorry. Anyways, you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about but, no, how much. Side note, I had yeah. to buy my own undergarments, which did you pick up from? Yes, it's in my car. Okay. Yes. Um, I had to buy my own kind of expensive, like, undergarments. To wear stay with uniforms. warm and yeah, wear with uniforms. That is not part of the uniform that you get compensated for, or not no. even compensated for, provided right free of charge. You're right. absolutely right about yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't have any problems with it because I'm the ginger beast, so I'm warm. But like hand warmers, I mean, those are like luxury items. But you think about it, every game. Oh yeah, it's you know, hand warmers. And st- I don't know. It's just the list goes on and on. I swear. Oh, Unless oh you for live sure. In California, like you're or you're have... in a closed stadium. Yeah. Why don't we have that? I know. Like, like I it mean, is Seattle. It doesn't rain that much. People need to get over it, but it does. The weather is. It's just pretty. enough to, like, n- it's a nuisance more than a competitive advantage, right? I mean, Amen. yeah. I mean, it's slippery balls with when they're wet. That sounds nasty. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, let's get Blind back on track here. How much do we make? So we're not okay. telling you, okay? That's the bottom line. We're not giving you an hourly rate. But we can stop, drop some stats. Well, because it varied for us, like you said. Yeah. Each year you're on it, you got a bonus. Right. Uh, if you were a squad leader, you got a bonus. Um, it just really depended. Right. Yeah. And each team is structured differently. So just to give you an example, there's a San Francisco cheerleader that's been quoted in an article that she earned a total of 1250 for the entire season. And when she calculated the number of hours for the season, it ended up being 450 hours. And if you do the math... That equals two dollars and seventy five cents an hour. That's disgusting. Which is less than minimum wage, far less. And um, yeah, for San Francisco, it's so expensive okay. to live there. Yeah. So you really you're talking about chump change. Like this is lunch money, gas money, maybe money to cover your makeup purchases. You have to through. dance three hours just to buy a coffee. Yeah. I oh, mean, when you do the bad. math, it never really netted to be like. I'm rich. <laughs> I'm rich. I'm rich. I'm rich, bitch. Um, anyway, um, 
But some of the other perks that you get might include some of the benefits from the sponsors. Um, the Seahawks gave us season tickets and pretty good yes. seats in the south end zone. Um, not every team does that, so some teams don't give the girls mm-hmm. tickets. We had a tic- we had season tickets and two of them, not just one, and the parking pass. Um, so I think that's, that's true. I that is a big perk. Pass. The parking is. is like fifty bucks, like mm-hmm. if you want to park close to the stadium. So that those are perks of the job. Um, travel, even though you're not paid for your travel time. And then just like the the sponsorship benefits for some people that were able to use them. Um, If you're did you get your nails done ever? No, but that's did you get your hair done? Very few times. Did you use the tanning? I did not use the tanning. Did you ever float? I did not float. Girl, you know (laughs) me and what? I do not swim. And I float down here. (laughs) No, I I did not benefit from. I used the the heck out of the gym membership. Yeah, that's true. We were always there. That was my perk um, to be able to practice. Yes, that was the best gym. I like the one in Issaquah. It's so good. Um, So that was that for me was great. You Mm -hmm. aren't paying out of pocket for gym memberships. That that definitely would add up too for people. But these are the kind of the perks of what you get in exchange for all that hard work that we outlined. So. At the end of the day, compared to like NFL players, obviously. How much does we, the NFL itself make? Fourteen billion in annual 14 revenue. Fourteen is my lucky number. I wish I had a cut of that. <laughs> but if you think about it, let's give some perspective. Like, based on the NFL's revenue, you divide that up amongst the thirty-two teams. Not everybody has a set of cheerleaders, but let's just say that there is enough room to provide an actual decent wage. Okay, but my thing mm-hmm. is, if they paid the girls really well, I'm not mm-hmm. talking it down, but yeah, I think the talent would show up, and I wouldn't have made the team. <laughs> okay, <laughs> whatever. I'm just saying, like when you think about it. Well, I mean, if dance anywhere was actually, you know, hey. given the respect that it deserves as a profession, slow clap to that. That's you so know, true. then I think people would be able to invest more time in their development as a dancer they would know that they'd be able to there's always that whole (laughs) stuff but there's the stop the starving artist thing right i mean you're you know an underappreciated segment of society and you're never really paid your worth but it's cheesy but it comes from the heart it does truly i mean that's why i loved it because i love dancing exactly i might have flopped around and not really had any (laughs) rhythm but i made it and i loved it (laughs) you're so Crazy. <laughs> this girl right here, if you guys only knew, she kills it and she's talking a bunch of crap. But make it till I make it. But you know, but but I think the 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 hard truth of it all is that the owners have money to pay us more. Period. Why aren't they? Period. Because they we don't bring any money. Like, I'm sure the perspective is that we the cheerleaders don't bring in money, like tangible dollars that they can probably count to. What calendar sales? What else is going to this? The money they collect from us from audition prep classes and you know like think of these directors and their budgets we're more of like we cost them money probably more than we actually make them money unless you're the dallas cowboys cheerleaders who are heavily marketed and they invest money into their cheerleaders so that they can actually become you know a profitable business exactly so but at the end of the day i'm sure those numbers will reflect that they can afford to pay us more they pay us what they can get away with we haven't unionized as a group to say to demand certain wages and treatment and all of that. So we don't have a players union. Well, not even that. But if we were paid a wage or given some kind of health benefits, we've been wanting to talk about this for a while. Mm -hmm. We've danced through injuries. Oh, yeah. Because if you spoke up, did we already bring this up? No. Yeah, if you speak up about an injury, you're out the game. So you better just fight through it and hope that something don't snap off. Exactly. And, I mean... A lot of these girls don't really know their rights in terms of what they're entitled to. Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, well, the ones that came forward and sued do. Right. I mean, but yeah, Good they for them because it's because two seventy five an hour. Yeah, that's pretty bad. No. I mean, that's awful. Like that's, I don't know. And if you count up the hours that you aren't compensated for, like it does add up mm-hmm. a ton, but. Let's just talk about the reasons that some of these... Well, in light of what they've been paid, let's talk about the lawsuits. Okay. Because some of these cheerleaders came to their senses. And you know what my conspiracy theory is, Brittany, in terms of why these little lawsuits started? So, you guys, there's a Pro Bowl. 
that's held, you know, obviously at the end of the, towards the end of the season. And so different cheerleaders from each group are brought together to celebrate, you know, being selected as Pro Bowl for their cheerleader for their team. And so my theory is based on the girls who were selected by our team for Pro Bowl, they always come back to our end of the year banquet and they're like, oh my gosh, you guys, we are treated so well and like, you just have no idea. And they really couldn't put it into words. I feel like it's like some secret society as to what they experienced there. But my theory is that when the Pro Bowl cheerleaders get together and talk about what it's like on their team with their program right. and start sharing the goods oh, and they're like, and oh, don't. you get paid? Right. You, you get paid how much? Oh, word? Like, I really do feel like this rumor mill started circulating because the truth of the matter is, I think in the lawsuits that have been filed, the Seahawks were listed as an example of what they should be doing. That I do know. So let's just get into it. Some okay. of them, there were, there were just suits everywhere, like a <laughs> suit and suit and suit. <laughs> um, you get a lawsuit, you get a lawsuit. But the Raiderettes um, ended up selling with the Raiders for $1.25 million. Um, for unpaid wages. So each of the girl on the, girls on the team that year got a cut? Former. They were reached back for <gasps> former cheerleaders, so they had to, like... So what, they each got, like, 50 bucks? Um, Because it was a class action lawsuit, so I don't know what See, the I don't know all that jargon. Terms, oh. Dumb it down. <laughs> but when they, if they find the right lawyer who will file a class action lawsuit, and then everybody who buys into receiving a settlement from whatever they're able to get for the class action settlement like oh, okay. you get a portion of it so Got it may it. not be what you personally would have been entitled to but if you elect to be a part of the class action suit then you get your part own of portion of it okay okay and 1.25 million i don't know how many women they were reaching back with in terms of former cheerleaders but getting something compared to getting nothing i mean it who knows what it ended up being at the end of the day but I take it. Yeah, me I too. mean, you a know, check in the mail. Woohoo! Exactly. Who else sued? Well, I didn't know that the Buffalo Bills cheerleaders—they did form a union. They did, and then they cut them. They just killed the whole thing on program. Yeah, video. tried to fight back, and so they just said, "We don't need a cheerleader." So not cheaper to keep her. Exactly. That's so messed up. They decided it was not worth the business risk. They, they, I think they had outsourced their. Um, the people who ran their cheerleaders. It wasn't like they were a whole separate company, like an entertainment oh, company that ran their saying, cheerleaders. Yeah. And they just basically, when the lawsuit happened and they had to settle, they just cut the cheerleading program. Wow. I'm surprised that, that the Buffalo it right. Bills didn't say, oh, come over here. Like, we'll treat you better. How yeah. that would look so good for them. But it's in like Buffalo. Like, who Ooh. is cheering outside in Buffalo? You'd freeze to death. Are I mean, they the I Buffalo Jills? Jills? Yeah. I wouldn't have been out there. I mean, we were just talking about, I was just said I would die and freeze my butt off to not wear a hideous um, outfit. But no, Buffalo is no joke. I would not want to oh. cheer outside and there. But anyway, they got rid of their program. Which and is, they still don't have one. Still don't have one. That's sad. But other teams like the Jets, the Bengals, the Buccaneers, they all paid out settlements as well. So women got smart and were just mm-hmm. like, nope, you're going to pay me my money. And things are changing. You speak up. You ask for what you want, and you or you just say it. Bitch, it. better have my money. Yeah, right. I mean, it. You know, and it takes. It. You know, there's been a lot of negative publicity, obviously, with the lawsuits, but it takes some balls. Right. I was shocked. If you listen to the beginning, you just heard how much time, energy, <laughs> drive everything that we invest in it. Yeah. We deserve to be paid. Absolutely. I mean, you're entitled just, to it. It's just law. not even I mean, like arguable. No. Okay. It, <laughs> Okay. Boom. Even the America Sweethearts, DCC, got sued. Exactly. For wages. So. Who is that badass? Because uh, I want to know. You know, they are like you said, America's darling, sweethearts, and they got their TV shows. They got big bucks behind them. So whoever came forward to sue, I'm sure she's. They probably, probably missed one dollar on her paycheck. She was like, <laughs> "I'm suing." <laughs> I'm. That's. That says a lot because there's this whole, and this is something that gets into like why we end up, why we do it. But there is this mentality that you're so lucky to be in your spot that you better not complain. Like for all that we do for you, the, all the exposure you get, you know, there's this, this sense of you better show some gratitude for whatever you get, whatever you get, don't throw a fit. You show that you're grateful. Yeah. And that's kind of what, I think that's the expectation that you're not entitled to anything. What you do get, you, have, you know, the director may have had to work hard for it, and you just kind of accept 
what's given mm-hmm. and just be thankful for the opportunity and and shut up shut up and dance <laughs> shut up and dance episode two but you know these these girls came forward and sued Good and but them. you know what it is catching attention because mm-hmm. california passed a law that went into effect in 2016 you guys i'm a lawyer if you didn't know just my background so i'm not <laughs> <laughs> I, I do I get a little, law and order. <laughs> I do little, get a little geeky with the, the legal aspects of cheerleading. I can't believe these two worlds are intertwining. But anyway, California passed a law that went into effect that basically mandated that professional cheerleaders be paid the minimum wage of ten bucks an hour. So we're not going to play a monkey game with this. Like they should be paid hourly, at least minimum wage. Yeah, and good for that. I hope more. I mean, if you think it is, you're seeing in other industries, too, where different state legislators are saying protect industries like models, the mm-hmm. modeling industry, and and have rules and regulations around just bare basics so that these people are protected. And they're noticing the abuses in certain industries, and I think it definitely needs to be called out. Absolutely. But well, what, oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. You know you go. There you go. But yeah, devil's advocate. I think you get a lot... You get a lot. It might not be like money wise, mm-hmm. but you get a lot. You get a lot. You out get of fame. It. You get attention. Mm-hmm. I know that's really important to some girls, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, these these uh, I won't call them millennials, but you know, for some, everybody comes to professional cheerleading. I think with different motives of what they see themselves getting out of it, and money is hardly ever at the top of that <laughs> list. But they might be getting the things that they want: the exposure, the followers on their social media. Um, to do reality shows. I yeah. mean, now you could be like, I was an NFL cheerleader, NBA dancer, all mm-hmm. this stuff. And they might, and then they'd be like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, we want her on our show. Yeah. You know? I mean, it might lead to other opportunities. I can think of several famous, you know, well, famous, but, um, you know, people who are former professional cheerleaders that have gone on to be either sportscasters or pro wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I mean, it's something that you can tell that might mm-hmm. open up other doors for you. Um, modeling. Right. Did this you? was interesting about Gronkowski's yeah. girlfriend getting into modeling. I was like, oh, well, she like wasn't a cheerleader before. And you're like, yes, she was. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, okay. Former Patriots cheerleader. So you Who knows when they hooked up? But yeah, oh, they're can, not married yet. But. They're not married. But but yeah. I want to check her out. She's she. cute. But yeah, she's now a, a Sports Illustrated swimsuit model. And, you know, that was a lifelong dream of hers. And she was hoping that cheerleading and dance would open that door for her. So. You know, I think there's the friendships. My friendship with you is priceless, yes. Brittany. Like, yeah. that's one You're of the biggest gifts. You're my best friend. Yeah, this best is, friend. you know, it's one of those things that you can't put a dollar amount on that. And the friendships that we have with, um, I think they last a lifetime. And, you know, I, I, that's the biggest takeaway for me. The gifts for Absolutely. me of doing this is just the relationships. And you get a chance to travel and, you know, you get opportunities to get back to the community in ways mm-hmm. that, are indescribable you know visiting children's hospitals and and for people to actually get joy from interacting with you because of the fact that you wear this uniform is it's humbling it is and at the end of the day you better have a good reason to t- that makes you devote this time and energy and effort and it shouldn't be about money right but at the same time bitch better have my money like if i'm Amen. putting out the amount of work there's just, it's just respect for what we do, exactly. and I think you should be confident. For you as a hardworking human, just flat point period. Right. Yeah. Like, why is it? A, why is it something that we have to debate? No. There is no debate. We're underpaid. Okay. That's it. And that's the end of it. Right. Fix but it. But who doesn't want more money in their job? I do. I always oh, feel like I'm underpaid. Yeah. Like you can never pay me, me enough, too. right? I mean, that's. But I'm I have always a big up on head. Craigslist. <laughs> Dancing <laughs> gigs. <laughs> Make cash daily. No, I would never. <laughs> but everybody money. deserves a raise. It, no, for sure. I mean, I think it's just a matter of you know what worth you have and what you bring to the table. If you're good at it, you put time in, you work hard. and We just want a little bit more. And there's plenty of people who have plenty of it that, you know, just share the wealth a little. Spread it yeah. around. You got it. Give like it. They, yeah, give it up. Yeah. All right. Now we get to... An hour in. Let's talk about some fun stuff. Woo! Locker talk. Locker talk. So I don't even know how this came up for me, but I just thought about some of the songs that we have danced to that have some crazy behind lyrics <laughs> while we're like 
twerking it out or doing some really cheesy move and it's the song is saying the most inappropriate things yeah. that just but it makes me genuinely smile yeah. like at the games and like we make eye contact and we start laughing oh my gosh like, or just like crazy in crazy songs because like love shack oh my your gosh your squad like love squad that one. one shout out to laura our squad leader because everybody kind of hated love shack i love it was a love hate relationship love with love shack, shack. I used to I grew love, up on it. I, I liked that song yeah. back in the day, but it, <laughs> during Tin the game... Tin roof! <laughs> rested. <laughs> but during the game, it would just be so... It just never fit the mood in a football game for Love oh, Shack to come really on. True. It was just... We had that throwback when year. When you sing the sound and the sound of the road, you <laughs> sir. People are like, what the hell? <laughs> What's going on right now? But everybody knew it. But we just... Squad one, the onesies, we would just look at each other and party it up and cheese it up and just have a freaking ridiculously goofy behind time with that song. <laughs> it became like one of my favorite ones to right? dance to because we were just so like the extra, extra read all about it. Like we, we were Twerk into so, love shack. So, so extra on that song, but it, it made it so much fun. That was a fun one. Some of them are just like nasty behind lyrics. Like what? Would you like to hear about it? <laughs> yes. Okay, so I learned through professional cheerleading that I actually like dancing to rock music. I'd never listened to it. I kind of knew like the classics, but never listened to the words of them. But one of my favorite ones to dance to was Shook Me. See, I grew up on ACDC too. Like I had it in my little cassette tape Mm -hmm. and like my Walkman CD. I could not. Couldn't dance too hard or it would skip. (laughs) Like I loved ACDC. Well... Let's just see what they are talking about here. She was a fast machine. She kept her motor clean. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> she was the best damn woman that I ever seen. She had the sightless eyes telling me no lies. Okay, now I'm starting to sing. Let me stop. Knocking me out with those American thighs. Yes. Thick thighs save lives. Taking more than her share had me fighting for air. She told me to come, <clears throat> but I was already there. How's that spelled? C O M E. Okay. These are lyrics from GeniusLyrics.com, so if they're wrong, then blame them. But, because the walls start shaking. Which walls? Anyway, the earth was <laughs> quaking. My mind was Spoken aching. word by Makiba. <laughs> and we were making it. And you. Shook me all night long. Didn't we cut this song? Yes. Upper management said, change it. Oh, well, we sure as heck dance our butts off Yeah. To oh, no, no. Kick line. I freaking love that dance. Me too. It's so fun. Oh, my gosh. Classic. Oh, so our choreographer um, at the time, Shannon, shout out to Shannon if you're listening. I loved all of her. She was like Me the too. rock choreography queen. Like her, ugh. Anyway, that's But then one she had of like my... a lot of technique. And she I'd did. be like, oh, my gosh. Like, yeah. I loved her because she did the turns using the other. That's right. She was a I lefty. Loved... Yes, and I mm-hmm. loved it because I'm weird and I do certain things left. Um, yeah, me too. See, that's I don't know. Oh, okay. I wanted to be like you. Well, what's your crazy song? <laughs> oh, one of mine is okay. So we've talked about show group a little bit, yeah. and this was like a specialty. You're supposed to have like extra talent. I don't know how I got on it, um, <laughs> <laughs> but basically we had like a 90 minute set, and it like flowed in and out between like game, like little uh, and crowd sets. games and yeah. things like that. Whatever, it was weird. Um, but there was a few songs that they danced to. One of the original, like, I don't even know. It was the pink set, right? Yeah. So we're wearing, like, this, like, pleather black. It was a cute, sexy outfit. It was cute. I liked it. Um, but it's a song by Ashley Simpson, Hot Stuff. The lyrics to that, like, we would perform this at the fair, and there would be kids. The Washington and, State yes. Fair. Okay. And this, like, it wasn't a big arena. It was, like, 12 people watching, and my parents <laughs> Like, yay, go Brittany. And uh, she would be like, I just want to take my clothes off. <laughs> like, I didn't prepare lyrics like Makiba, but. <laughs> and then what else did they say? Can she do it? Can she do it? Piece of cake. Like, I can put my leg up all the way. I kind of liked that song, but I guess technically. Me too. And then there was some girl in the middle, like, I'm crouched down because I have no talent. And then the girl behind me is like lifting her leg up. And I'm like, woo, yay, you know? <laughs> like, I just thought it was kind of awkward, but it made me laugh because. It was so, like, sexual. Sexual then, nature. You know, here's a veteran in the front, like, yeah, I love it, you know. <laughs> you got well, another one? I got another sexual one. I like okay. sexual stuff. Um, <laughs> talked too much information. Um, this was from a year that we had, um, I think her name is Mich- yeah. Michelle, right? Mm-hmm. Birch. She is um, 
the director and choreographer for the Portland Trailblazers. I'm going off of her Instagram handle. It's like Chelly Birch or something like that. That's not her name. But anyway, she taught a kick behind routine to the song Freak by Enrique Iglesias. I didn't know he was in it, and but Pitbull's Pitbull. in it. Okay, see, that's what I remember. Yeah, well, Pitbull's verse is the one I'm going to read for the next spoken word. Baby, you pop and lock it. Drop it. I watch it for sure. Baby, you rollin' and rockin'. Move it. I use it. Let's go. You know I lick it and Whoa. do the things that'll make you explode. You don't believe me, mommy. Just let, 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 let me go low. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm a freak, 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 freak. Yeah, that's how you know. Now can I get a beat, 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 beat. Baby, back it up nice and slow. I just want to... Skeet, 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 skeet. Right out and go. Woo! I came, I saw, I conquered. Off to the next. Let's go. Oh, that sounds like herpes. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that we were dancing to skeet, 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 skeet cracked me up. Okay, nobody, but go ahead. Sorry. No, nobody But not knew. even that. We were on our knees, okay? <laughs> twerking back. Twerking back and then like thrusting our head back into like a long I don't even know head whip to the back yeah. and I want to skeet 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 it was so like I'm like dad why did you come to this game so inappropriate but I kind of loved it though and okay <laughs> my other one was also from show group um and it, I call it the orgasm song but it's basically um I am a good girl by Christina Aguilera from the movie burlesque I wasn't in this set, but I literally was always watching the girls like blushing, like about to to come out for the next set, and I can't, I can't even do it. But she basically at the end of the song, like oh, she's making all uh, sorts. Oh, uh. yeah, that's happening. <laughs> and then for, like, it ends, hella long. and I'm like, <laughs> okay, now I come out. Wrong. We're talking about like at least thirty seconds of that, right? Oh, it is. It's a lot of <laughs> orgasmic sounding. It was a little, it was cute, but a little slightly awkward. Like you said, the show group audience could be kids. Right. Didn't you say there was like a group while you were abroad when you're like performing in like a high school gym or something? Oh, yeah. And people, some of the troops' families were a little like offended, like, <sighs> yeah. or they wanted you guys to put more clothes on or something? Yes, basically. So show group, we kind of like do what we got to do to get the thing done. <laughs> and um, <laughs> they basically like taped off the side of the gym floor and everybody was in the bleachers oh. it was a pretty small crowd and i just i remember like dancing like <laughs> getting it and then looking through the crowd and there was like moms covering their kids eyes oh my goodness and just like you could just tell the vibe was very like what the actual <laughs> and oh, oh yeah i am a good girl <laughs> like okay dropping into the splits like wow All what a right. show yeah you got another one I, I got don't. one more. One more. You ended on a a good a note. Real good, <laughs> good nasty note. Why are these all from show group? Oh my gosh! But Dixie Chicks, let her rip. Okay, it just made me laugh. It was like a hokey dokey country, and I hate country, yeah. so it was already like what the hell. But to make myself enjoy it, I let it rip. It's like fart. That's you fart. Know, let That's it rip. fart talk. Let it fly. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> And on that note, <laughs> I'm a professional, almost 30-year-old woman. That's it, man. Is that all we got? <laughs> all right. I have my money. <laughs> well, what are we talking about next week? Next week? We don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Too far into the future. Yeah. We can tack that on later. Yeah, we'll tack it on later. Goodbye. Bye-bye now. Okay, we got ourselves composed. <laughs> Next week, what are we talking about, Brittany? New rules. Yes, that's the name of the episode, and we are going to finally tackle the topic that we are also asked about all the time. All the crazy rules of being a professional cheerleader, from dating the players, to leaving restaurants if players walk in, to... That's it. <laughs> Those two roles, next episode, <laughs> we'll cover in detail. But just, you know, the expectations when you are part of a team, the rules of the organizations, which vary by team, but we're going to dig into some of the rules, not to go down the lawsuits road again, but some of the teams have gotten into trouble because the rules are not fair or not equally applied to right. the other, you know, employees of these professional teams, namely their players. So we're going to dig into this gender discrimination claim that some of these girls have raised why are we subjected to it 
crazy things like weight and restrictions on right. can everything you really get you kicked off because you're overweight can you get kicked off from chewing gum for smoking yeah for posing in sexy clothes on your own social media so there's a lot going on and we're going to tackle them rule by rule and we're even going to create our own rules i'm kind of stealing from um bill maher's show new rules but i like that that's Mm -hmm. locker talk next time so stay tuned next wednesday join us for the next episode of the pro cheerleading podcast don't we sound official now yes okay okay bye 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 thanks for listening to the pro cheerleading podcast Please subscribe, leave a comment, or review. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube, all at Pro Cheerleading Podcast. And also on Twitter at Pro Cheer Podcast. This is Brittany. And Makiba. Until next time. Keep your eyes on the sidelines.